What is up everyone today? Pokemon Go Battle League will switch over to Open Ultra League and Ultra League Remix. This video is going to be all about Open Ultra League though. We'll take a look at five really strong teams in the Open Ultra League to get you ready for it. Before we do that though, I want to ask y'all, if you end up enjoying this video or finding it useful, please consider hitting the like and the subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Anyway, let's get on with the team, starting with one of my absolute favorites. Talonflame lead, running Incinerate, Flame Charge, Brave Bird, Swampert in the back, running a Mudshot, Hydro Cannon, and Earthquake. And then you have the choice between two Grass Pokemon, also in the back, Shift Tree or Bombs or Bomb Snow. Also, both are running the standard moveset Snarl, Leaf Blade, Foul Play for Shift Tree, Powder Snow, Weather Ball, Energy Ball for Bomb Snow, Bomb Snow, or Shift Tree, or even Swampert, by the way. And I'll be Shadow as well. That's up to you. It can all just work fine. Uh, I've ran this team before. I've made a video about this team as well, but the Shift Tree variant, I'll post it down in the description if you want more uh, detail on this team. Yeah, the basics of this team. Talonflame lead is just incredibly strong. Uh, you know, if you have a good lead, it's amazing, of course. It's always amazing. If you have a bad lead, you want to switch to Swampert most of the time. Because Swampert in Open Ultra is actually a really good safe swap. Since there's not that many uh, grass types out there. And even if there's a grass type, you just let Swampert go down and you farm down with Talonflame. And that's usually the name of the game. Farming stuff down with Talonflame. You know, if you lead into a Swampert lead or like a Giratina, uh, you want to switch to Swampert immediately. Uh, they will likely bring in something that counters Swampert, but loses to Talonflame. You just let Swampert go down. A lot of the time you can even burn a shield with Swampert. Then you farm that Swampert counter down with Talonflame, and then Giratina, or like a Swampert, doesn't even counter Talonflame anymore, because you have so much energy, you can just start unleashing Brave Birds. And once uh, Talonflame has done a lot of damage, you know, your Grass type in the back can usually just sweep. And that's how this works. As you can see, this team does have two XL Pokemon, the Antenna Flame and your Grass type. Uh, will have to be XL, which of course for players under level 40 is not ideal. Uh, just hold on. Later in the video, we will have some teams without any XL Pokemon. Next team is a double fire team, which takes advantage of Talonflame's huge closing power. You want to lead something that beats Talonflame's biggest threats, uh, which are mainly like Jellicent, Swampert, uh, all the other water types. Uh, Giratina is pretty hard and other dragons as well, though... Besides Giratina, there really aren't any other dragons. So Greedent and Umbrian do a great job there. Both wearing just a standard moveset. You know, Greedent, Bullet Seed, Crunch, Body Slam, and Umbrian, Snarl, Foul Play, or Dark Pulse, really. That's a personal preference. I prefer Foul Play because it's slightly spammier. And then, actually, it's kind of a personal preference between Lava Resort and Psychic as well. I think Lava Resort is probably better, though. Just in case you face another Umbrian, you kind of do want to use your own Umbrian on it. Then you have Dragon, not Dragonite? Did I just say Dragonite? No, you have Charizard on the safe swap with Dragon Breath. Yes, Dragon Breath, I think, is a really good safe swap in the open ultra meta because it's just better against Kiratinas and Swamperts. And also versus Jellicents, which will very often swap into your Charizard. If you can hit a Swampert with a Blast Burn, you can actually farm it down with Dragon Breath if you use two shields. That's really strong. At Giratina and Yosho just farm down with Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw so you can get switched back. But most of the time with Charizard, you want to just try to generate a shield advantage, which Charizard often can, because Blast Burns just hit everything so hard. And once you have a shield advantage, Talonflame can sweep. Because as we know, Talonflame can beat even its hardest counters with a shield or energy advantage, because Flame Charge plus Brave Bird just hits so incredibly hard. That's the whole ID of this team. Next up, a classic, Triple Water. This team has been around ever since the start of Go Battle League, basically, and still works to this day. It's also a very cheap team compared to a lot of the current Open Ultra teams, you know. No Excels, no Legendaries, some Community Day moves, though, which can be tough to get, but in general, this team is quite inexpensive. Swampert, Gyarados, Lepras is a standard comp, though you could also consider running Empoleon instead of Lepras, if you want a little bit more coverage against Charmers. Uh... All three of these are run the standard moveset. Swampert, Mutual, Hydrocan, and Earthquake. Gyarados, Dragon Breath, or Dragon Tail, actually. But personally, I do prefer Dragon Breath. I like the utility that one turn moves hats have. You know, basically being able to switch at any point. Or you're always able to time your charge moves appropriately. It's really nice. So I would go Dragon Breath, Aqua Tail, Crunch, and Lepras. Ice Shard, Surf, Ice Beam, Orphe Ring, Empoleon, Waterfall, Hydro Cannon. And then Bl Drill Pack or Blizzard is kind of a debate. Uh, personal preference. Uh, I would say you can run this team with Lapras lead or Swampert lead or even Gyarados lead. Personally, I would do Swampert or Lapras lead though, depending on, on what on if you're seeing like Steel leads or 
or dragon leads uh, but then gyarados is, is your safe swap uh, at all times it's just a very solid uh, generalist that can usually take the shields even from its hardest counters grass types can be kind of difficult for this team however they're not that common and Gyarados and Lepers do fine versus most Grass types. Unless they're called Ferrothorn. If you see a Ferrothorn, just top left. Uh, it's honestly game over. However, they're not that common. So I wouldn't worry that much about it. Uh, other Grass types, especially if you see them in the lead, just switch into your Gyarados. So you can usually get them quite low. Or they switch out. And then you want to make sure you try to get energy on Lepers later. So you can Ice Beam... Uh, the grass type in the end game so yes definitely ways to play ar around uh, the grass types with this squad uh, but it's not easy but definitely possible and if you don't spot a gra grass type this team is just really really strong next up is a really solid team i first saw zionic cover in one of his videos so if you want more detail on this team team go check out his video put it down in the description below anyway obsecund gengar cresselia is the line he ran uh, which could be considered a pretty cheap team because uh, no excels in this team. There's one legendary though, which is kind of expensive, but compared to a lot of other open ultra lines, this is relatively cheap. You could also consider going Scrafty in the lead instead of Obsigun, uh, which helps a lot versus opposing Scrafties and also versus opposing Obsiguns, because of course, a Scrafty is way better versus Obsigun than Obsigun is uh, versus Scrafty. Uh, also, Pokemon are just running the standard move sets, you know, Obsigun, uh, Counter, Night Slash. And I guess the second move is kind of up to you. I would go Cross Shop though, because it's better versus like an Umbrian. Scrafty, Counter, Power Up Punch, Foul Play, Gengar, Shadow Punch, Shadow Ball, and Shadow Claws, Fast Move, and Cresselia, Psycho Cut, Grass Knot, and Moonblast. That is probably what you want to run. Now, the workings of this team are Fallout. You just want to set up Gengar to sweep, basically. You either want to get Shields down, or you want to lure out the Dark Type. If you, if you don't see a Dark Type in the lead, you always want to switch to Cresselia at some point. You want to save your Obsidian or Scrafty to take out the Dark type later. Because Gengar and Cresselia both struggle, of course. So you want to save swap your Cresselia. Hopefully, lure out the Dark type. And once the Dark type is gone, and you can maybe even burn a shield with Cresselia because Boomblast do it for super effective damage, Gengar can just sweep, which is awesome. Besides that, its team works really well because all three of these Pokemon cover some really meta Pokemon really well. Like Giratina gets triple countered by this team. Cresselia has some good answers to Swampert, gets kind of destroyed by Cresselia, and Obstagoon and Scrafty also do fine. So in general, it's a very, very strong team. And if you can set up Gengar really well, you can just sweep all teams, which is awesome. Final team is actually a team I wouldn't really recommend you to run. I just want you to be aware of it. This team has been around since the beginning of time, basically. Kiratina, Registeel, Swampert. Just three incredibly solid pokemon that form three really solid cores you know giratina swampert cover each other really really well giratina registeel cover each other insanely well registeel swampert is basically almost unbreakable so these three form this three incredible uh cores which is what makes this team very 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 solid giratina in this team usually runs dragon breath these days because otherwise this team would be a tad weak uh, to like obstagoon or scrafties uh, but with Dragon Breath, those matchups are really fine for Giratina, even though it does have the type at disadvantage. I mean, that's just Giratina for ya. Registeel uh, could be a different steel type as well, actually. You know, Melmodel or Galarian Stunt Fisk would work there as well. And then Swampert, you know, uh, Mudshot, Hydro Cannon, Earthquake, Sand Moveset. We all know uh, Swampert uh, is insane. Again, this team is pretty common. I think it's very predictable. You know, uh, once people see Giratina Registeel, they know it's a Swampert in the back. Once people see a Registeel Swampert, they know it's a Giratina. Once people see uh, Giratina Swampert, already said that one. Anyway, they know. They know the team, all right? They know the team. And you should know the team as well. If you see any of these po two Pokemon, you should know the third. Because usually uh, that is the case. So keep that in mind uh, when playing your battles and also when building your team. Keep this team in mind because once if you ca can counter this team, you probably have a pretty solid squad. Anyway, those are all the teams for today. Hopefully this was helpful. See you all in the next one.